let's talk about how I started running. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna tell you all about how I got into running. But before we do that, if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the episodes that I put out. Last week, I showed you the race that we did around the bay with the boys, had a ton of fun. So if you haven't checked that video out, make sure you give it a watch. But if you're joining this channel or you're following me for the first time or even just recently learning more about my journey into running, um, I haven't always been running. I actually fairly recently got into running and I want to share a little bit with you guys about my story into getting to running and why I'm doing it. Um, obviously, you guys know I have some big goals. I have the Miss Saga Marathon coming up here in four weeks uh, three weeks from today now um, and I'm hoping to hit anywhere between a 305 and a 310 marathon um, in that race and then my ultimate goal for this year is to go under sub three that will hopefully happen in October of this year at the Toronto Marathon but I have not always been this into running um, and to kind of take you through the story we gotta we gotta dive back um, quite a bit um, into to my upbringing so I'll, I'll share a little bit with you we'll go back in the archives here but um, I grew up always being a super active kid um, playing a ton of sports hockey basketball baseball um, all of that stuff and growing up um, I was also always a larger kid, um, believe it or not. Um, and uh, this was something that, you know, I think it, it defined part of my, my upbringing, but it wasn't something that totally held me back. Um, it wasn't like I was bullied a lot about it, but it was just something that, that was always part of my life. And um, it actually ended up being in my favor as I moved into high school. Um, I started to play football and focused really hard on that. So I had the dream, like everyone else, about going to the pros. So when I got into high school, I put everything else um, on the back burner for the most part and focused on football. Um, I played throughout high school, had a fairly successful career doing that, um, and then went on to play in university um, for four years. Well, I was at the University of Windsor. I played for the AKO Fratman. Not going to dive into too much of that, but um, I did that for four years, and then I realized at that time that I was not going to be um, a professional football player, so I uh, graciously retired from the sport um, to focus on getting into physiotherapy school, which ultimately ended up being my career and doing a lot of what I'm, I'm doing now on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, when I retired from football is when I started to really focus on my health. So I was 260 pounds when I stopped playing football, um, which is kind of crazy to think about <clears throat> can, where I am now in terms of like my weight and what I'm doing. But when I retired, um, I decided that I wanted to, you know, focus on being a little bit healthier and knowing that I did not need to be that big because um, I wasn't playing anymore. And I actually got into CrossFit. In the first CrossFit gym that I went to, shout out to CrossFit Workhorse Lifestyle in Windsor. Um, they really opened my eyes into the CrossFit world. Um, and I and I jumped in headfirst and I went hard and I pushed myself. And I think it was one of those things that I found um, helped replace the competitive nature of, of football. And uh, I dove all in. So one thing that you'll probably realize um, over the course of me talking about the journey into running and even what I'm doing in running now when I kind of get into something that really fires me up um, I dive right in so I drank all the CrossFit Kool-Aid for quite a while lost a lot of weight um, you know so I went from being 260 probably to you know 200 pounds um, and as you know in CrossFit there is a little bit of running um, and I didn't hate the running most people hate the running in CrossFit I didn't hate it which is kind of funny because my whole life I grew up talking about how I hated running um, and never wanted to run and I'll tell you a little funny story and I think every probably overweight younger kid 
can uh, can relate to the story I'm about to tell. But um, in gym class, we had to do a lot of running, and I remember one day faking um, having asthma so that I didn't have to run anymore, um, which is really funny now because all I do is run. So you never know what's going to happen. In 2017, which was kind of my intro into the running world, um, I kind of had the idea of doing a half marathon um, as a bucket list thing. Like, I'm going to do one, I'm going to train for it, I'm going to do one, and I'm never going to run again. Um, And so that's kind of what got me into um, running or my first real exposure to running anything uh, far. So I'd never run a a 5K or a 10K race at that point um, in my life. And um, I was in physio school at the time, and there was a lot of people that were running around me. I was training to run the 2017 Detroit Free Press Half Marathon. Um, And I trained with the little understanding of training that I had at that point, but I would say that I did a decent job, all things considering, getting prepared for that. Um, So I ran that in 2017, and I ran it in two hours and one minute. And that was um, something that I thought would be the last time I'd really run. The funny part is that like at the time, I kind of vowed that I wouldn't do anything like that again. But um, the process of training for the run and then the race itself was such a cool, great environment um, that I did enjoy doing the race. So even though I said I would never run again, I think like deep down I knew that I would probably come back to this at some point. And I think the second exposure I got to running was I did a a Ragnar event. I'm pretty sure they still put this on, but I did the one that was local to the area. You run from Colburn to Niagara Falls and it's like a 24 hour relay race that you do as a team. At the time, the CrossFit gym that I was going to in London, um, I kind of got weaseled into doing it. Me being, you know, kind of oblivious, was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, So I think I ended up running like, you know, couple 8Ks, some 10Ks and 11K. And the crazy part is like, you're running through the night. Like I remember one leg of that race I ran um, from like 11 p.m. till like whatever, you know, 12 a.m., 12.30 in the morning um, from like Toronto to Etobicoke. So it was uh, definitely an experience, but it was something that I didn't hate. Um, I enjoyed the community. I enjoyed pushing myself. And it was something that um, I got to do on my own and had to, but also with other people. And so I kind of, again, didn't say at the end of that that I'd never want to run again or do something like that. The thing that really kick-started the running for me full go was was COVID. Um, So COVID hit and uh, at the time I was training at the best gym that I've ever been at. Shout out to Movement Strength. Absolutely love that place. I was a coach there. I can't say enough good things about Movement Strength. Um, But I was training there. I was doing not really CrossFit. I was doing more like mixed modal training. I was strength training. I was doing like aerobic conditioning, um, dabbling in some CrossFit workouts, that kind of stuff. So I was staying staying fit. But when COVID hit, um, I couldn't, you know, get to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to sit in front of a TV and train and do this YouTube video Zoom workouts. Like it just wasn't for me. I wasn't going to do it. Um, And so I decided that I was going to start to run. And um, so I started running again and uh, slowly kind of got back into it. Um, At that point, I had not been running much at all. And so I just went out and started running. I think I made a a small goal for myself to like run um, three times a week. And then eventually, as I got a little bit more consistent with that, I decided that I was going to put um, a half marathon on my schedule, and, and it was just going to be me running it on my own. Uh, I set it up for my birthday, uh, do the distance. It wasn't a race. It wasn't a virtual race. It was just me running um, a half marathon. And so I did that. I don't remember what I actually ended up getting. I know I beat my previous half marathon time. I think I hit something like a 150 or 155 or something in there, and um, and then obviously the next logical progression from there was to run uh, a marathon and again this was during COVID so I was basically going to run the Dalton Lano marathon on my own um, and just do the thing and so that was the very first time I got a coach 
And I got to get a big, big shout out to my guy, Chris Herbs. He is a physiotherapist run coach out of Boston that I met through the physiotherapy space. And I hired him as my first ever run coach. Um, and at the time I was doing all my runs in miles because he is American. So I did no idea what kilometers, what paces were or anything. Um, but he helped prepare me for my very first marathon distance run. And it was a great experience because I learned a lot about how to prepare for something like that, the volume that was necessary, the progressions. I started to learn a little bit about fueling um, and it was a great entry point into the running world. And so in November of 20. 22 i ran my very first marathon distance run um, i did this in hamilton um, and i did it where i ran from my house in hamilton all the way to dundas to where our clinic is located the movement physio and performance at that point i had a little bit of support from my business partner um, dawn who came in and helped pace me the last 12 kilometers um, but i completed the marathon distance i finished it in a 405 I think, um, which for me was was awesome at the time. Um, super pumped about it. I think I had the goal of trying to get in under four hours, but it just didn't happen that day. The reason at the time that I wanted to continue to do it was it was something that just brought me joy, but also allowed for me to have a competitive side. So I've talked about this before on my Instagram account, but this is the first time I've had like this nice, beautiful intersection of doing something that brings me joy, but also allows me to be competitive with myself and against other people, which is just something that I thrive off of and I love doing. And so um, that was really what kickstarted it. And then from there, I just continued to to run and train and got all went all in. Like I think after that, um, I still hadn't raced any any sanctioned marathon or half marathon again. But um, I signed up and I ended up doing what's called a backyard ultra marathon, um, which is basically you run, um, I think it's like a 6.7 kilometer loop every hour on the hour um, until you can't anymore or until you're the last one standing. And so a local run club, shout out to the moms who run, put on this event um, and I was like, yeah, sure, why not, let's do it. Jumped in and that was probably um, one of the most humbling experiences that I had because I learned a lot about um, what it means to be prepared for events and fuel for events. And I was actually really super happy with the outcome of that event. I ended up running like 12 hours, um, which got me to 80 kilometers total, which is crazy. It's the most I ever been on my feet. Um, but I immediately realized that I was underprepared and underfueled. So from there, I was motivated to dive into getting more in running shape and figuring out how to fuel for these type of events. And that's when I hired um, my next coach, uh, Luke, who is at Movement Strength, uh, best gym in the world. But I hired him to help me with nutrition and run programming and starting to prepare me for events and really started signing up for races. So I signed up for um, a half marathon in London in September, 21 or 22. And, um, I was prepared for that. I trained for it. I knew more about nutrition. I was in good physical shape. I ended up running a 137 at that race. Um, and that really boosted my confidence as a runner. It made me realize that I was capable of pushing myself a lot more. And that's where the competitive bug got um, really juiced up for me. Um, after that, I ended up running an ultra marathon, um, which was a 50K trail run. Um, put on by Happy Trails. It's called The Bee, but I ran that 50K. That would have been November of 2022. Um, and I had a goal of doing a five hour ultra, ended up doing a 545 or 540 or something like that, which again was super, super great, super big confidence boost for me. That really led me into finally racing my first road race. May of last year was my first marathon road race that I ever ran. It was the Toronto Marathon, um, May 7th. So it's really coming up on a year. Um, and I had the goal of going sub 3.30 at that marathon. And I did that. I had a uh, 3.29, which was huge for me. Um, I did not really think it was possible. It was one of those goals that I set that was a big stretch goal um, for me at the time. And then I hit that and was super pumped about it. Led into like, where I am now. I ended up signing up for the Georgina Marathon, which was in September of the 2023. Um, 
and had like the best prep um, of my run career heading into that. Everything was dialed in. I was feeling super fit. Um, I ended up running a 316 at that marathon. Um, and at this point, it just really kept opening up my eyes to what I was capable of. Um, and it kept proving myself that like I had more in the tank than I ever thought possible. And after running that marathon in September of 23, um, I, I was like, all right, let's do this thing. Um, that's when I set the goal of wanting to qualify for the Boston Marathon between the time I'm 30, which I am now, to 35, which means I'd have to run like basically a 255 marathon, if not maybe a little bit faster than that. So I set that goal and I committed to that and I said, okay, I have five years to do this. Let's see what can happen. And um, that kind of led into to where I am now. And um, we're coming up on a month out from Mississauga where I'm hoping to go 305, 310, anywhere in between there um, and ready to, to rock this thing. And the reason I wanted to share a little bit of this with you guys is that like a lot of times, even for myself, you go into social media or you go into YouTube and you find these people that are, are doing really great things. And the reason I started wanting to create more content around running was like a lot of people that I watch motivate me to push myself and do the things that I'm doing. And I thought if I could create some stories and some things about my journey, it might inspire other people to continue to push themselves. And, that, and that's why I share a lot of, a lot of this stuff. And, um, a lot of times we jump into people's journeys and we don't realize that like, you know, where they came from in the progress that they've had. And we just think that they, where they are is where they are and they just magically appeared there. And I think for anyone that is honestly sharing their successes and their stories openly and not like, you know, just doing things for, for views and clicks and social media, like they have come from a place where they weren't great and they've worked really, really hard to get to where they are. Um, and that, that's what I've done um, for the last three years. Like I wasn't a runner, I was 260 pounds. I vowed that I would never run um, again when I stopped playing football. Um, I didn't think I would ever be, be capable of running a marathon, let alone an ultra marathon, let alone 80 kilometers. Um, I never thought that I would be fast enough to even put myself in a position to qualify for Boston. Like that was never anything that was ever in my mind. Um, and then just like three years of consistent work has gotten me to the point where like that's possible. And I think that's the number one thing that I've learned is that um, if you consistently show up and you just consistently put in the work, you will put yourself in a position to do some things that you never thought was possible. Um, and I think it's important to have dreams and goals and aspirations that toe the line of not being realistic. I think it's good to have that. And then with that, you have to start putting in the work towards potentially getting to those unrealistic goals that are just on the line and see what happens. And if you're willing to commit to the consistency of that work for a long period of time, knowing that it's possible that the outcome of the goal that you're trying to attain may never happen, I promise you, you're going to put yourself in a position to do more than you think. Um, and so that's why I wanted to kind of make this video and just share with you guys, you know, why I'm running, how I got into running. Um, the one thing that I know is that like I go to these races and I see people and I see these elite runners and I see how fast they're running and I see like their strides and the way they move and I, and I just look at myself and think about myself and I'm like, dude, I know that I'm not like you, um, but I'm going to work my ass off to try to put myself in a position to be competitive um, for myself and then also with other people around me because that's something that, that really motivates me. So, um, yeah, I think that that's all I got for today, guys. I just wanted to share that story with you. Um, if you made it through this, this video, um, I appreciate you. Um, I hope that it maybe inspires you or motivates you to think about what you're doing and maybe push yourself because, um, 
doing something that's pushed my limits, such as running, um, has really changed my outlook on life. And it's allowed me to meet a bunch of people that have had great impact on me. And I hope that, uh, that you guys have the opportunity to do that. So if you aren't subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. We're three-ish weeks out, I think, from the Mississauga Marathon. Where I'm going to try to go 305 to 310, which I'm pumped about. Um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, head over there, follow me. I'll post some content there. If you aren't subscribed, sorry, if you aren't following me on Strava, go follow me on Strava. I post all my runs there. Um, I'm trying to become a Strava star, so give me a follow there. Throw me some kudos. I'll throw you some kudos back. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are getting after it. I hope you guys are putting in the work. I hope you guys are moving towards something that fires you up. And as always, I hope you guys are digging deep. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.